This episode of the Esoteric Order of Roleplayers is brought to you in part by the generosity of our backers on Patreon. Visit patreon.com slash esotericrp to find out how you can become a backer too. This episode of the Esoteric Order of Roleplayers is brought to you in part by the generosity of our backers on Patreon. Visit patreon.com slash esotericrp to find out how you can become a backer too. Hello listeners and welcome back to Rusted Veins. This is the final installment of the series. Last time we left the Coterie on the back foot as they struggled to come to grips with a series of encounters and revelations, not the least of which being the reappearance of Zion and Sydney's long-lost brother Kenny. Can the Anarch Baron Juggler offer them the aid they seek, or will they continue to go it alone? Let's find out. We know where Capricious, to find him. This one. Yeah. yeah, he really is. Wow. So he actually extends invitations to his home? Not his home. His oh. haven moves around. Oh, okay. Yes, but he's just but like, you can find, you know where to find me. Do we know where to find him? Well, actually, you would, because he's your sire. He is. So you yeah. have a certain so level I would know? of bond okay. with him. Mm. <laughs> your sire senses are tingling. I mean, yeah, you, and you, can, you probably fun. have his, you probably have his phone number, too. Yeah, I have his phone number, but. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So. <laughs> well, that, too, yes. <laughs> So you're so um, so you're standing there, and so Baggy and Lynch are like, "What are we doing?" Yeah, I'm just like, "Go, go, go." Okay. So. So they start to they start to get in the car. Quick question about. Uh, or a car that they called to come to pick them up. Keep wanting to call him Jester. Question about Juggler. Mm-hmm. Um, how does he style himself? Does he call himself a Baron? Yes. Yes, he's the Baron. He's the Baron of Gary. Your Baron. Anarchy. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. All right. So as you are, as you see Baggy and Lynch drive away with a familiar person with Kenny, and they head out, mm-hmm. and um, someone else walks up to you on the street. Oh, for God's sake! Well, you're not going anywhere. Um, well, we're trying to. He keeps throwing stuff at us. Yeah, yeah, All right, we got yeah. It. So it's the the thin man. Is a so the white dude. The thin man. The white dude. The guy with the sandwich board. Crazy Ira. Oh, it's Ira. Crazy Ira walks CFO up. CFO of Enron. <laughs> the white dude. Crazy Ira. The white dude. Mm-hmm. Yes. You come for more of the good word. Yes, 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 Padre. I'm here. So he's looking at each of you very, very really? closely. Well, wait, if Ira's white, then that's not going to work. We can't use him. <laughs> we can't use him. No, 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 but do you know if, if the... If the um, vessel was described as a certain way or being a certain, you were surprised by who it was. That's so a there's point. a chance that Modius may not know. Oh, it's Modius it. may not know it's Kenny. No. I hadn't thought about I that. I hadn't either. Yeah. Just saying. That's kind of a major point. So he's looking at all of you. <laughs> yeah. And says, "I am Dane." Okay. Well, I have a quarrel with your kind. My battle is not with you. Not with you, demons, on this very night. He's very dramatic. Yeah. I seek proximity to Modius. <laughs> I believe you have the best way of getting me How up close to mm-hmm. get ri- to get rid of this blight on Gary forever. Ooh, why yes we do. Why yes we do. Come to think of it, we do. Would you be willing to lose a sandwich board? <laughs> it got wet in the rain. I got rid of it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> Anyway, I just need to get close to him, and I will get rid of him for you, I promise. How, how trustworthy is this guy, like? Ira? Ira. He's Dane. He's so... so Sol- Dane. Sullivan Dane. Sullivan Dane. Oh, yeah. oh. I didn't realize that he had a... Uh, Does he have a... Oh, him! Oh. Yeah. 
the top, the trustworthiest guys. <laughs> we, we've checked everyone else off the list. That's so. true. <laughs> <laughs> Process elimination. It's not like he talks with a mouthful of gravel and cotton. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's very nice. <laughs> He's our kind of guy. Yeah. 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 That's a big yes. Yeah, if you if it almost if you, if you think that if you weren't kindred, you may like Sullivan Dane, you may have something in common with we him. We may have been friends here. once in a different world, yeah. in a different reality. I just need to get. I just need to get. If you can get me to Modius, I can what? make. I can make this happen. All right. I got to get rid of him. So I say, uh, you're full of. You've got plenty of confidence. But what's your actual plan? Because we can get you to Modius. Yeah. But we have to kind of give you a little push, and you have to do the rest. I can do the rest. I've been around for a while, kid. Is he a vampire? Can we tell if somebody's a vampire? He, yeah, he's not. He's, he's not, not a kindred. Vampire. No. That's a problem. It's just a crush the old man. I've been around for a while, and I know how to take care of shit. He might have enough crust to get the job done. Mm-hmm. Oh, grit and dirt. That's right. Now, yeah. Here's a question. Maybe it's like a streetwise kind of role. It's okay, um, yeah. How mm. noteworthy is this guy mm. around town? Because mm. one Modius may not recognize him, some of his goons might. Mm. You know what? And if she's coming all the way from Chicago mm-hmm. to deliver something up, why would it be a local? Whereas That's a good question. this guy's like. Notable. He's. It's not that guy. Obviously. He's not as like he's not a notable person. He's not. Like he isn't. Right. He isn't okay. one of the movers and shakers. He's, he's a background. Guy. He's in the background, but you sense there's a level of power there that. Uh huh. He's not talking. Feels a little intimidating. No, it feels a little intimidating and, and odd. Actually, as you're talking to him, it's an eerie sort of. Um, he seems uh-huh. to have like a force shield around him almost. Oh, mm-hmm. I like this guy. I say let's deliver him. Yeah, if I'm sensing that, then I'm gonna. Uh, uh, I'm gonna do it. Yeah. Let's do it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, because here's the thing. Mm. Huddle up. So. All right. So he steps back. He's like, "I'll let you decide." Yeah. So you know, basically, it's a win-win. Right. Because we send this guy in, and if he does his thing, great. If he doesn't, it's gonna piss Modius off. Modius is gonna figure out what happened. Right. He's gonna figure out he got double crossed. He's going to come out and start looking for us, and then we can set up an ambush somewhere. Mm. You know. So, <clears throat> yeah. Question. Mm. If this guy is able to get rid of Modius, what are we going to do about the fact that he can probably get rid of each and every one of us? <laughs> Why are you looking at me? <laughs> She's, she's talking to you guys. I say we prepare for that when the time comes. Yeah. We prepare ambush for either of them. Maybe? He's focused on Modius right now, so we'll use him for now. And we'll try and get rid of him. If we need if to. If we need to. If we need to. You know he's not going to succeed. So you're, he's Zion, not going to you, succeed. Your phone starts buzzing. Oh, All I'm saying is if Check he does, Modius. then we got another problem. All right, we got another kingpin. <laughs> so while they're talking, I'll... Oh. Separate a little bit. Pick up. Where are you? We're on our way. I mean, there's got to be a kingpin. Better hurry up. Just get over here. We're on our way. All right. Click. All right, let's go. <laughs> Click. You mean beep? <laughs> boop, I mean boop, boop. beep boop, boop. All right. Click. <laughs> <laughs> you just say that out loud every time you hang up your phone. Yeah. Click. Click. I don't know. It might be a burner phone. That's true. Those are still flips. True. Snap. Oh, yeah, Some of them at least. The flip phone, yeah. Clamp yeah. chill. All right, so I'm it. curious, Padre, what are you thinking about all this? What are your thoughts? It seems like a solid plan. Well, uh, we send Iris slash Sullivan Dane Sullivan uh-huh. into uh, to see if he can take care of Mobius, and we just uh, Mobius. Yeah. Mobius. Yeah. yeah. Mobius. Morpheus. See Morpheus. Morpheus. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we we prepare an ambush for either one when they get out. Okay. Yeah. Whoever, whoever <laughs> either one. Out. Yeah. Whoever comes it. out the other end. Yeah. yeah I right. like that. I like that. Okay. Yeah. They're gonna be weakened from the fight. Hopefully. Okay. <laughs> I'm stronger than ever. Oh, God, they're either going to be weaker oh. or they're going to be really, really pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wait, so, yeah. 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 So, any other thoughts before you work with Dane? Or all I'm saying is, if his number one mission is to get rid of us, 
even if he does this one task on our behalf, we better have a plan to get rid of him mm -hmm. ASAP. I'm All right. send him after Juggler next. Juggler! Yeah. yeah. Juggler's so nice, though. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Couldn't He's, meet a nicer guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's willing to let Kenny live free range in this house. Free range. Free range. Yeah. Like a is that in the scenario back. or is that? That's it's great. Just, it does free, free range. It's hilarious. A coop in the backyard. Yeah, coop. just running around. Yeah. Until yeah. <laughs> it's time to chop his head off. Yeah. It's probably all right. You know. Yeah, actually, no, it's just probably not the bad. So, so Jane walks up and says, so, do we have a deal? We're doing it. All right, let's go. You might have to strip. What? Well, what? well, that's how we got Kenny, isn't Mo it? Modius doesn't know, though. Oh, that's fair. Yeah, you saw the other people in the van were wearing clothes. Oh, okay. Kenny was just in his tidy yeah, ways. Kenny has nothing oh. to do with anything. Oh, he good. He just might have to. <laughs> 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 this is Kenny's a always prince, after, after all. Kenny's always been an Yes. Nothing to do with anything. Dane's like, I will do anything. All right. To get into Modius's. All right. Well, keep your shirt on. All right. <laughs> so. Or don't. Let him take Or don't. Don't. So you all clamber into the vehicle. Yeah. 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 You're ready to go. Yeah. With Impala. All right. You yes. head over to Miller Beach, going along the coast of the lake. Mm. It's taking a lot of gas. Oh, um, it is. Zion, did you get a did you get a text from uh, Lynch that they got to the safe safely? Oh uh, no. no. Not yet. No, not yet. It's all been happening in a matter of minutes. Yeah, so. that's true. It's a bit of a drive. Isn't okay. It? So, you're heading to Miller Beach. <sighs> yep. Heading to Miller Beach. Off we go. Indeed. You. How pungent is Dane? He's not. He's actually not pungent. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a squish in the back seat with him. He's yeah, not no. really a street bum, so. No, he really isn't. Apparently. Oh. I like him better when he's crazy, Ira. Yeah. I do too. <laughs> I like him better when he's crazy, Ira. <laughs> you like his singing voice. Yeah. Uh, sing for us. So you are at you arrive to Modius's uh, lo like his haven, mm, yeah. and you see that it is like barricaded. There's like large fences, spotlights, yep. like floodlights, um, uh -huh. and it's, it's actually a fairly uh -huh. nice, uh, you mm -hmm. know, home. Well kept. Well kept, and there are guards outside the front, mm. and you pull up, mm -hmm. and uh, flash the lights. So it's all dependent on whether Modius knows what this guy looks like or not. So you uh, you leave the vehicle. I get out of the vehicle. Usher and Usher Dane over. And I say, and so, the, so the guards are standing there. As, as we're as them. we're driving up, I say to Dane, I say, uh, I'm going to be handling you a little roughly. Fine, right. I can handle it. He kind of he kind of grins. Yeah, I can handle it. All right, so you just ask me. That's all I'm saying. Manip <laughs> <laughs> manipulation plus subterfuge, sure. maybe. Sure. Difficulty of three. Because right, so, they're just hired goons. Yeah, so I just, you know, I get out of the car, open the back door, I reach in, I grab Dane, I pull him out. And I say, uh, I've got a special delivery from Odius here. He's been expecting you. He said to just leave it at the front gate. And I got three successes. All right. Okay, you make it. So Dane makes a show of just kind of like, oh, staggering over yeah, yeah, to yeah. Uh, the guards. And they said, we've been expecting you. All right. So I just kind of push him forward. All right. So he, he gets picked up by the guards. Mm -hmm. And they head into the house. All right, well, get back in the car. Drive back away. Out, see the eight point turnabout. That's right. <laughs> Heading to the vault. I'd like to make yeah some some notes though about like security. <laughs> like what's that? Oh yeah, definitely yeah. looking like. Yeah, like maybe we maybe I'll take a, a little loop around the block. You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, there's the spotlights and floodlights. There's yeah. razor wire all around mm -hmm. the periphery. It's on the coast of the the lake. So, oh nice. So he has just this really nice setup there. So one part is hard to reach because it's the right. beach. Right. Yeah. And then the other part is um, just facing like razor wire brick, you know, very sturdy looking. What's the actual gate looking like? It's huh. um it's a it's an actual like just a wrought iron like iron gate. Mm -hmm. Um it's just solid iron. Oh um it's not like um, bars? Yeah, it's just a solid a yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to it's hard. The beach would probably be our best it would probably be the weakest point. They yeah coming from the water. Mm -hmm. Certainly would. Okay. So where do you wanna do you wanna stake this out? Do you wanna go back to the vault? I wanna stake it out. I wanna see if this guy can do what he says he can. I thought we were gonna prep some kind of ambush for when someone starts coming after us. Yeah, could do that. So is our 
meeting spot. Also, you should probably check on Kenny and make sure he made it to the vault. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to text uh, Baggy at this point. Okay. And just be like, give me some good news. Okay. I mean, so our meeting spot, the vault, yes. yeah. is clearly not our any of our havens, per se. Right. right. It's just, no, it's just it's your turf. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. turf. Mm-hmm. So how well known is it as a spot at which we meet? Mm. Has it been kept question. relatively secret? Are we like... Who would know about yeah, it? Yeah, like how... Seems like just our core group. Obvious probably, as it. Probably, yeah. Lynch probably knows, Baggy knows. Yeah, Lynch That's and about Baggy. It. Besides us. Mm-hmm. Hopefully the gypsy cab driver doesn't know. <laughs> Yeah, like they just let him out at the you know, end blocks. of the block. Yeah. yeah. Mm. I'm just trying to think, like, where would they come looking for us? Right. When they they know them. your turf. Mm-hmm. Um, they yeah, know they where know your, they turf. know where your families live. Yeah, they know where my they flock is. They know where your flock is. They know where your human families still live. Mm. They know who associates yeah. with you. That's a problem. That is a problem. They know where your precinct is. All right. Well, you know what? We're just gonna have to fight. Yeah, so I say we, we stake it out here before they can kind of spread out into the neighborhood and start okay. targeting our various sensitive locations. Sure. Okay. So, yeah, we're, I think, uh, you we're know. We're just going to wait. Him off well, our, our, our Nosferatu friend's here yes. and uh, can go try and do some deep stealth work, but I'm, I'm happy to just sit in the car. <laughs> You know, down, the car away. down at the end of the block. I can't, and just, I can't really do deep self work. I can stand in one place and hopefully not be seen. All right, then uh, uh, Malort can do some uh, deep self work. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, I'm fine. Just, uh, It'd be interesting to get inside. To see what it would, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. So at this point, in it's fact, in fact, if we want to retcon slightly, mm-hmm. uh, Malor oh. could kind of try and slip in while I'm doing the handoff. You know, like I could be doing it, you know, oh. causing a distraction kind of thing. Wouldn't it be good to hear the conversation? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Smart. I could do that. Because you- obfusc- obfuscate. Mm-hmm. I mean, the shadow thing. Yeah, obviously he's gonna rip the floodlights, but I mean these guys are just mortal cronies. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. There's that just one that the you can just kind of. They're probably ghouls, honestly. That Modius has turned. Uh, sure. to I'm just trying them. to think in terms of like unseen presence. I'm sure Modius has aspects. Mm. Um. Are, actually, no. no. So he's. Are there animals around? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, a fox. Like, maybe uh, there's a fox slinking around. Or like a bird, by the like lake. A fo- oh, yeah. You know, maybe like some uh, some lake birds or something. Sure. Yeah. I think it's yeah. a little Seagull. too. It's a little too late at night for any lake birds. How about, how about an owl? A random owl. Bat, maybe. Yeah. Or a bat. bat. If there's like a tunnel a somewhere. I will say there are other homes that are near um, Modius's home that are not as well kept as okay. as his house is kept mm-hmm. and so yes there's a possibility that there may be bats mm. lurking around in some of the eaves of the homes that are near the lakefront okay uh, what the fuck animal calls <laughs> yeah i think i'll be doing like a yeah yeah, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Padre starts making weird bat noises yeah it's about to go down <laughs> as, as no karate or <clears throat> want to do so yes yeah, so i get uh <laughs> So I yeah. have to make a. Uh, so do I do animal the hunger roll first, or do I do the the hunger roll plus yeah. animal can? You do at, so whatever. So what? Are, what's your hunger at? Two. Uh, my hunger is currently one. at one. One. So yeah. you're going to include that into. It your... It just says make a hunger roll to activate feral whiskers. See, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Do the hunger first. So just one, one die. Nice. All right. I'm good. Okay. okay. I was like, you're gonna just drain a guard, yeah. aren't you? So, okay. <laughs> All right. So now I make charisma plus animal. Again. Yes. Oh yeah. Charisma mm-hmm. is. Make it happen. Yeah, unseen presence might be good for just. Uh, there might be, but if there's a camera and on the thing, the camera oh. will catch yes. me. Yeah. Yes. All right. Oh, that's inconvenient. I know. Do I have a target number or? Um. Yeah. So this is gonna be difficulty. I'll say two. 
need at least two successes. I have three successes. Oh, four successes. Ooh. Any on the hunger dice? Or? Nope. None on the eye. They, I have it. two on the hunger die. That's fine. Okay. Um, all right. So you make. So what are you doing? Um, so I'm, I'm trying to. I'm trying to draw a bat and. Yes. Do my subsume the spirits, so That's project my presence so into the bat, okay, uh -huh. and have it fly into the uh, compound. Into the compound, yeah. Yes. So there's a little flappy flapping <laughs> yeah. of a little uh, a flippity flap bird puppy yeah. making yes! its way. A bird puppy. Yes. <laughs> making its way into toward <laughs> Padre, um, and uh, it's sort of just sort of hovering near you, mm -hmm. and so you. I look, um, I look into its eyes you do. and project my consciousness into it. Awesome. So when that happens, you go into like an instant torpor, right? Yeah, yeah. I sort of like so slump down to the ground. So you right. collapse against, against the vehicle, yeah. wow. and then the bat starts hovering, yeah. and you have taken over this bat. Yep. And you have an air. Suddenly, you have like you can see yourself on the sidewalk, looking. So are you, well, do you have your mask on or no? Um, at my mask. Well, actually, um, that's a good question. It says that some things stay, but other things don't. Mm -hmm. I'm dragging so. his body to the tree line, okay. so it's not relevant, really. Uh, let's I'm see. I'm curious. Uh, do, 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 do. Wait, hold on. Uh, While well, seeing the spirit, I always know the direction and distance of my real body. No. Um... It retains my fortitude or other powers that are always active while my consciousness is absent. Okay. Absence. Absent. 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 <laughs> while my consciousness is absent. No. So would my uh, would my would my mask be there or would it vanish when? I like, think like, it would. I think you would. Uh, it would be. You wouldn't have it. Yeah. No, I don't yeah. Because you have to consciously project yeah. it. Yeah. 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 So right. Sydney. So once you slump, you're suddenly seeing things from an air view, like well, aerial view. Yes, indeed. And Sydney is. Is you see Sydney getting you under the um, arms and pulling you into the vehicle? Yeah, so I hear all this happening. Yeah, and so then, so then where do you so go? Far. Yes. Um, then yeah, I. That's uh, true. We don't see anything. Well, okay. Yes. Apologies. I mean, there's there's some things bats see, right? There's like a little bit of vision. No, You're dude. sensing it through your sonar. There's, yeah, exactly. Okay. So right, I'm, I'm gonna like... head towards you know where there's the most you know movement and energy oh, and stuff. Okay. You have yeah, to hear. Yeah, exactly. So. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to try to focus on the sound of because um, okay. I've heard um, <clears throat> I've heard Sullivan Dane talk and I've heard Modius talk so maybe yes. I'm gonna try to pinpoint their voices yes. and make okay. towards them. Oh, okay. this is so exciting! Yeah. So <laughs> the vibrations are very faint as you, but then as you get closer to the house, there's more vibrations. But you're picking up on the 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 vibrations of the the light mm -hmm. of the um, generators the generators and, yeah. you're feeling you're sensing the even the the waves of the yeah. ocean of yeah. the lake mm -hmm. onto the beach yeah. um, you're sensing other bats around yep. um, and Good. so you are fluttering you're realizing it's mating season <laughs> and then you hover you away <laughs> <laughs> yes it's <laughs> Yes, of course. Yes. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Distracted. No. So you're fluttering, <laughs> flapping toward the house. Yeah. And you um you're near one of the windows mm. and you <laughs> just right into the window. Just flat. <laughs> <laughs> you're fluttering. No, I'm picturing the bats from Dracula, you know, they're just on the wire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Dead moment. <laughs> Or I can just take position on the eave, like yes. right above the window, so you just light. upside down. Yes, you yeah. light on the go. eave, there and you, you do what those bats uh, do so well. <laughs> a millionaire inside sees you and goes, this is how I strike fear into the hearts of the So, um, so you are, you are, um, you're near an eave, which is near a window, which is near, uh, close to where Modius yep. is, and Modius is, you hear him talking to Dane. Okay. And says, "So you are, you are what she brought here to Gary." Mm. And Dane nods. You feel him nod. I, I hear the the rustle of his hair. No, I think they do have. Yeah. yeah. The vibration of a nod. Yeah. No, yes. they, they have little piggy eyes. They can see things. They're right. Yeah. So. Um, I think I send out one of my one of my little squeaks, and that reverberates around to see, let me know yes. how yes. the movements happen. Yeah, you're making little sounds. Yeah. So not. And. Um, yes. You sense that Modius turns when he hears the little bat chirp. Oh, mm -hmm. oh, really? 
Stay very still. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, so Padre, that's what you're doing, and um, okay. so I'm trying to think: is there anything all that you all want to do? So you elected not to try to sneak in. Not in that way, yeah. No, yeah. Because if they've got a camera and a guard, I'm yeah. sure in front that I can still be seen on camera. I can only fool the yeah. human eye. Cool. Oh, okay. But I can certainly sneak around the back way. Where there's maybe less surveillance because mm. if it's like lakeside like i could certainly obfuscate my way like hit the water along line. the gate and hit the water line okay yeah that's true yeah. so do you want to do that or mm. yes okay right, let's just do it okay let's some backup great mm-hmm. So, um, part of it is I want to see what the fuck this guy can do. Right? right? Yeah. yeah. Seriously. So, Sydney, you've, you've brought um, Padre's body into the vehicle. Zion, you check your phone and you get a text from Baggy. Okay. What did you ask him? I said, give me some good news. That's right. And all he texts back is, ask Juggler. Son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. Surprised. I'm not. I am. I'm half and half. Okay, so as as Padre, as you are you are on the eve, and then Malort, as you are encroaching more. Do I need to roll for them? Yes, please. It's okay, you just got your juggler next. That's mine. Yeah? Um, it's gonna be three. I get three. Yay! Alright. Hey! One critical. Hey. Ooh, okay. Not on my blood test. So you successfully. No messy criticals so far this session. I know, I'm yeah. disappointed in y'all. We're not so, rolling enough. Well, I think part of it, yeah, yeah. there's only one high note I think it's an appropriate amount of rolling. Yeah. I don't know, it hasn't been that. It, uh, anyway. So no, you successfully. We'll, we'll debrief at the end. You, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you successfully um, are. Describe what you're doing. Well, essentially, I want to go around the perimeter. Yes. Because um, certainly, like, all of the attention is on the front gate. Right. Yes. Right? Yes. Just thinking obvious, like, mm-hmm. dealers, like, coming to his front door, essentially. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it doesn't seem like there's any surveillance really right around the perimeter. Mm-hmm. So my goal is to essentially just book it okay. to the back. Yeah, because uh-huh. I mean uh-huh. they can't uh-huh. see me, right? Uh-huh. Um, and then just kind of hook my way in okay. the back and maybe see if I can't uh, I don't know, find a window that I can kind of cozy up to and okay. get a sense of what's going on. So that's easily found. There's um, some large plate glass windows. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, you don't. You're not sure what's on the inside to block the light, but you do see some. Um, he en- he's a toreador. He enjoys yeah. aesthetics, the yeah. beauty he's of an nature. Yeah. Bastard. That's what he is. Opulent bastard. So yes. Yeah. So as you creep up to this window, you get an, a little eye line, and you see the back of Dane. Oh. Um, there and you see, you hear very, you hear uh, mm-hmm. Modius talking, uh-huh. and so mm. you two are hearing this, and you hear Modius say, "Well, let's see if you deliver the goods." Mm. And you see him suddenly go in and embrace Dane, mm-hmm. 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 and he's latched onto Dane, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. onto his neck. Mm. How does Dane look? Like, Dane is just standing there. Mm. Letting him do it. Just uh-huh. totally, like, completely solid, strong in his oh. stance. All right. Damn. This guy better not turn out to be, like, just some vampire fanboy. He's like, I really want to get fed on. <laughs> He's like, oh, oh it's the best ever. <laughs> no, no. Actually. All right. Wait ready? for it. Ready? Wait for it. The opposite is true. Yes. Mm. Suddenly you hear Modius screaming mm. in agony. Mm. In pain, mm. burning, mm. Mm-hmm. and his he's drunk so much that yeah. he's caught on fire. Oh. oh, his face is on fire. His face is on fire. He oh. and so Dane steps away, and and he's holding his neck, mm. and there's just smoke and fire, and Modius is completely aflame. Jesus, 
Um, those of us who are watching this, do we frenzy? Because uncontrolled flame, or...? Yes. Ooh, ooh. Mandalay, I've come a flame again! <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm sure my reaction since I'm rocked by the water is just to, like, yeah. scuttle back yeah. Yeah. Like, into the lake. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So you head in that direction. All right. So if I risk frenzy, I believe that means that I need to make a frenzy roll. And if I fail, I lose control of that. Okay. So nice. I've lost control of the bats. Oh, no. <laughs> At least you're not transformed into the bats. So they yeah. Just, like, yeah. Become a human hanging <laughs> upside naked. down. Just <laughs> naked, guys. Just like, hey, what's up? <laughs> uh, how's it going, guys? I make it so okay. that form stays, but okay. it's little eyes squint. Ooh. Yeah. Like, ah. oh, oh, so, <laughs> so we will. So suddenly, Zion and Cindy, you see the guards listening to an earpiece, uh-huh. and you see them rush into the house. Yeah. Okay. And cool. um, yeah. we will we will fade out on that. <laughs> okay. Nice. Oh, that's exciting. And have our epilogue. All right. Okay. Oh. Wow. Sweet. Okay. So, I, I want you all to roll a d4. D4? Whoa. <laughs> wait, wait, this, is, this is you, not the playtest, right? No, this is me. Right. We're talking about dust that I didn't bring. No. Uh-oh, okay. No, I <laughs> I'm like, who the hell? That's you talking. Yeah. yeah. All right. And Three. there's duplicate. Okay, so, okay, so Jen, here you I go. I got a two. Two? Oh, I see. No, one. Oh, there you go. And you get four. <laughs> I roll, yeah. Did you roll a four? I did not. No, I rolled a two. <laughs> that would have been amazing. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I want you to read these. Um, you're in the epilogue mode. Oh, okay. Another so. fun historical fact that may not be true is that the D4 was originally developed as, as a caltrop. caltrop against raids by uh, anti D and D activists to use it now. during the during the sa- satanic, satanic okay. panic. Yeah. All right. So then go ahead. <laughs> so you can read you can read some of it aloud, you could read right, none ready. of it aloud. Capone! Okay. Capone. Oh wait, wait, really I'm sorry, really quickly. I'm sorry, sorry. So let me just say our epilogue takes place in Chicago. Oh okay. okay. Alright, like the um, effects of what we've done. Chicago's Primogen Council enter stage right, stepping onto the exclusive second floor, doing platform to overlook the dancing kindred and kind, gyrating and grinding. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. I need to the back up because I was reading this. Oh, I'm so sorry. Right, I'm so I'll sorry, you guys. Once more. I get so excited. I'm Once just, more with you. Okay. Yes. yes. So, our epilogue takes place in Chicago. Chicago's Primogen Council enter stage right, stepping out onto the exclusive second floor, viewing pa- platform to overlook the dancing kindred and kind, gyrating and grinding on the succubus club dance floor. Ah, the succubus club. They take their positions sitting around mm. um, on this floor. So languid. There are some, so of, some of them are present there. Um, so you're taking on new roles for this brief epilogue. All right. And um, I have to get mine too. And <laughs> I have a part two play as well. Okay. Um, so I want you to take some time to read who you are and then we'll describe the scene a little bit more. Shall I pause? Um, if you want to, or you can just cut it out later. Yeah, well, I'll save myself the word. So we will say who is on the scene, um, starting with Jen. Who are you playing? I'm Capone. Okay. When the Capone. The Capone. I'm Al Capone. Cap one. Do I read this? If you want to, yeah. Well, um, when the new prince took his position, he insisted a member of his own clan took a place in the Primogen Council to keep his actions in check. Chicago's Ventru set to attacking each other, both openly and subtly, in a shadow war lasting almost ten years. The last man standing as the smoke cleared was Capone. Rumor has it he was holding a Tommy gun and smoking a cigar. But Capone squashes those rumors with a violent fury whenever he hears them. <laughs> if there's anything Capone hates, it's being a parody of himself. He is Al Capone, but he is not the movie depiction of Al Capone. Hmm. He's a, as a mortal crime lord, Capone was wildly successful. As a vampire businessman, Capone is ruthless and savvy, as a Ventru should be, hmm. whether in a boardroom or kneecapping ghouls, and anarchs who step out of line. Mm. Capone has a lot to prove and has resolved to be loyal to the prince to the end. Though his connections to organized crime are now outdated, his pockets are deep, his own gang is sizable, and he will set guns to anyone looking to oppose clan and true. Okay. Shemp, what did you get? I got Annabelle Treadell. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, um, 
I mean, I just read all of it. Yeah, if you want to. Okay, sounds good. The beautiful, decadent Toreador, known as Annabelle Triabel, is the heart and soul of Chicago's kindred. If she is not at the party, the party is not worth attending. Mm -hmm. If she does not appraise newcomer's art or talent, that newcomer probably doesn't deserve to be here. Mm -hmm. Annabelle is respected in part for her age. She claims to have been embraced in 17th century Paris, and in part due to her dedication to Chicago. Annabelle is a hedonist, but in tonight's increasingly stifled Camarilla, her ebullience is welcome. She recuts her ash blonde hair nightly to a different style, often wears contacts to accentuate her sky blue eyes, and always wears the latest fashions. Her dark secret is that her embrace of Modius in the 19th century, mm -hmm. but for the time being, her child is keeping quiet. She desired the praxis of Chicago for several years following the previous prince's final death, but her fellow council members impressed on her how necessary they find her on the council. Whether the claims were true or they just wanted to limit the Toreador's reach, mm -hmm. Annabelle now harbors a resentment to her peers for holding her back. She wanted to be the princess. Hmm. Oh, okay. Question though, you said it's up to us. Does it behoove us at all to not read all of it? If, I mean, you could read it all. I mean, since I don't think we're going to be playing any of this again. That's why I'm just curious. Yeah. All right, well, in that case. <laughs> Lay it all out. I'm Jason Sun Newberry. Mm hmm. The uh, few kindred who know of Sun's true nature cannot understand how he has survived for over a century. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Embraced in 1893, Sun was torturing and murdering kind and kindred alike for the best part of the 20th century. Whoa. And through means of blackmail, eliminating opponents, ready charm and wit, and a recent fanatic devotion to the Camarilla, this smiling psychopath has ridden the weight of infamy all the way to the Primogen Council of Chicago. <laughs> Rumor has it he even murdered his predecessor, Marina Leary, grandma, to son, but he cannot recall. <sighs> With the whole city in his hands, he has killed and debased more kindred in the last decade than he ever did before joining the council. <laughs> Jason only looks 18 years old despite his age, his slick black blonde hair immaculate, his cheeks rosy red despite his undead state. Creeper. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And I am Rose, Rosa Hernandez. Only recently filling the primogen vacancy left by her vanquished predecessor, Inyanga, the youthful Rosa Hernandez brings the fire and territoriality of the gangrel that the gangrel are so well known for to the council. Mm -hmm. Only embraced in 1974, but already jaded, called it, she believes Chicago... <laughs> She believes Chicago should adopt a permanent war footing to oppose lupines, the Second Inquisition, and even anarchs. Her experiences with her Sabbat-leaning sire taught her never to trust a vampire who calls himself Canite. And her many battles with werewolves have assured her that the Camarilla is the best sanctuary for which a vampire can hope. Rosa ignores the accusations that she sells out her clan, most of whom have left the Camarilla. She believes Chicago belongs to her clan as much as any other, and promises any gangrel seeking respite that they can find it under her wing. Hmm. Likely the most informal of the primogen, this attractive Latina rarely dresses up or indulges in the pomp and circumstance her peers enjoy. Great. And so I'll be playing Marcel, who's um, basically it says, uh, Nikolai was the last Tremere primogen. He was recalled to Vienna around a decade ago. Abraham Sable and Eric Eric, though, debated over who should take his place, and the primogen happily placed bets on who would take the role. When they both approached the council to say, due to the incident in Vienna, the Tremere will not be joining the council and instead appoint a proxy. The primogen were aghast to discover Marcel representing the warlocks. Mm. Marcel is a follower of Set. Mm. While the clan of snakes oh. is increasing, increasingly style themselves as the clan of faith these nights, none amongst the primogen trust the relationship with Tremere and Setite. That said, they would rather work with the serpent than against him. So, wow. I'm in the peculiar role of mediator. So you all are at your fancy Chicago nightclub, where you usually frequent. Mm -hmm. Marcel, um, you're laughing together um, into um, this uh, viewing platform where you usually will take your leave of the kind whenever you're tired of interacting with them. And uh, Marcel, I step out and I say, as tradition dictates, I shall stand in place of our friend Nikolai while the warlock's Viennese issues demand his attention. Let us discuss the Gary situation. No. Well, the Gary situation. Mm. Yes. So, 
what do you all think of what went down? Um, Modius is no more. He's gone and suffered the final death. Rest his soul. It was just one of those damned hunters. Oh? So it seems. Who? I didn't know there were hunters in Gary. Nor did I. But he was consumed in a pillar of fire when he tried to feed from him. Whoever it was that Bronwyn delivered to him? Yes. Seems too involved. I say the Anarchs need to be put down again. That's one way to put it. Capone, what are you thinking? Is there any money to be made out of such an impoverished city? Perhaps there is. In what way? Well, that's what I'm working on. I'm trying to figure out if it's worth our energy even concerning ourselves with Gary, considering... What an unmitigated shithole it is. Right, as long as Juggler's there, there's really... It's not going to get any better. That's true. I just feel that maybe this particular coterie, I mean, they identified them as... They're just some local toughs that came together and somehow managed to unseat the prince. I don't know if it was because Modius is weak or if it's because they were actually brilliant. What does Bronwyn have to say for herself? She's on the road. Mm. I haven't heard from her for a while. I mean, not only did she deal with these defactors, but she couldn't sense anything was amiss. Mm. And it was her job to uh, Mm arrange this delivery, then clearly she's not as perceptive perceptive as she'd like to think she is. True. I'm just thinking that maybe since Modius is finally gone, that we can actually put a prince in there that'll actually do something, clean up that shithole. Mm -hmm. As you said, Capone, I don't... Modius did nothing. He was ineffectual and pathetic. Totally weak. I agree. This is a good thing. Maybe if we have those, uh, we could take the coterie under our wing. Yes, their leader is a gangrel, is he not? Yes. And he was close to Modius. True, he was. I think he's an excellent candidate. If you say so yourself. We should invite (laughs) them here and see what their medal is. Hmm. It's a good idea. Well, you know that these Anarch packs are of high interest to the prince. Mm -hmm. I don't know. He may want to purge Gary after all of this, but (laughs) I don't know. There's something about that coterie. He might want them to join his army. He has been sneaking around and creating a new army of kindred. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to be on the wrong side of him if he were to do that. No. I'm sure we could turn them to our uh, way of thinking. I agree. Mm. They could be easily manipulated. Mm -hmm. Certainly better to have them on our side than Mm. to lose a good supporter. Especially if they didn't just get lucky. Right. Quite so. Very good. I'll die before I back juggler. That's all I can say. (laughs) So Marcel, I laugh at that. Ha ha ha. But juggler knows, juggler knows the streets. He knows his people. He knows who's there. I know he's an anarch or proclaims to be. He's too much of a loose cannon. Good point. Not to mention the fact it seems like he played no part in this unseating. Mm. Truly, if he knew the streets and he knew the people, then he would have mm-hmm. been involved. Maybe he's just letting them do their dirty work, or his dirty work for them. Mm, for he just wanted to gloat. True. That's yeah. true. Mm-hmm. All right, well, should leave it at that. See what happens. Maybe bring them to Chicago. Let's have a look at them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So we'll fade out okay. on 
musings about bringing the coterie <laughs> to Chicago. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll fade out credits roll Yay. with a disclaimer saying that any any of this that bears resemblance to people living in living dead or undead. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yay. Yay. Do we have any Thank immediate hot takes? Um, um, yeah, we could talk about yeah, it, but there. again, just, uh, just don't want to. Uh, I appreciate your patience with my self loathing as I run through this. <laughs> it's hard for Well, I just wanted to say that, that Zion's secret ambition was to knock um, uh, Modius off his, as they put it, engine block throne. Yeah. Uh, so that was. That's pretty good. Yeah, I was, I was working towards that the whole session. Yeah. You did it. So, yeah. And I did it. Yeah. And I didn't get any blood on my hands. You did it. You did it. And you did it. Um, was let me what see. was all the secret na- note passing? Yeah, what's all that about? Oh, I was constantly in contact with Sullivan. He was, yeah. I, I knew who he was from the beginning. And I, oh, really? My job was to mm. get him in close with really? me, with Modius and uh, have him take care of it. Wow. So you did it! Wow. Awesome. That was awesome. All right, I just cool. want to find out really... Um, oh, do they have a survey? Yeah. There's a survey? Well, uh, no, 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 no. I just want to see if there's actually any questions like uh, that we can ask. Did you think it was difficult or easy to learn these rules? Like, I thought that was a little tricky. The, the only thing that was tricky to me was the frenzy mechanic because it's like it just completely flips the the dice roll. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. That was mm-hmm. So it's like you go, oh wait a minute, yeah, I have to roll under this. No, so I, I failed. Yeah, right. Yeah, what did y'all think? Yeah, was I it agree. easy or hard? I thought it was easy, and I'm not, mm-hmm. I'm not really like into figuring out systems yeah. for us at all. Yeah. 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 I still play, managed to play it without too much embarrassment. That's mm-hmm. good. <laughs> That's, yeah. And then, did you like the hu- were the hunger dice enjoyable? Like the idea of having yeah. those? Yeah, was I like it good? I thought that was fun. I think it'll come into play probably more in extended campaigns yeah. where your hunger yeah, sure. level starts getting higher and you're rolling more yeah. hunger dice. Yeah. Then you actually get those I feel messy like it was hard goals. to tell how that really would have ultimately affected. Yeah. Because honestly, right. even the difference between like playing today versus playing tomorrow, yeah. where it was the next day, if like if you didn't feed, then you're knocked up to two. Totally. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. It, it would have um, a big part to. Plus, play. I mean, I I was rolling pretty hot in terms of not having hunger rack up. I mean, I made like what four or five hunger rolls. Yeah. So I could have been maxed out. Of, you know. If I yeah. Could, you know. So it is. It is much more like kind of in the hands sure. of the dice. Yeah. Which is you know that's actually good for long term play. But. The only thing I found confusing was the mechanic of like incorporating your hunger dice into your normal rolls, but then also making separate hunger rolls, mm. but then also making like other skill yeah. rolls, which then again incorporate. It just felt yeah, it's a good yeah. kind of. It felt like too much. Like that could mm-hmm. be more streamlined. Yeah, and it's, I can understand like when you might roll hunger because yes, you're trying to focus, you're trying to accomplish something, mm-hmm. but at the same time you're incorporating it into your normal roll, and so mm-hmm. it feels like that that aspect should already. Be a it's why. That was why. Mm. You know, why would you roll it that many times? Yeah, yeah. It, like I said, it felt a little redundant at some moments where it's like, okay, yeah, you make your skill check, which has a hunger roll built into it, it already. Yeah. And yeah. then make yeah. another hunger check. Like, yeah. Uh, Although yeah. in play, like, I could see if the blood was flowing. Yeah. That's yeah. different. Yeah. Right. right. It remember how they did it in the pre alpha it was way clunkier. So this is more streamlined. It is. But, but it's still I think it was just compared to previous versions of Vampire that I've played. Like that felt like I liked the hunger die. Mm-hmm. The extra hunger too. rolls felt unnecessary. Or again like Yeah. Kind of maybe just felt like too many rolls for mm-hmm. one for one uh, yeah. skill that you're yeah. trying right. to achieve. Yeah. yeah. You know, I almost uh, feel like it should be something that you just mark every time, and then once you hit a certain threshold, you're like, I'm now I'm adding another hunger die to my pool. You know, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, or even just tacking it on to like the rolls that you make hunger rolls for, or that yeah. you add the hunger dice to. Yeah. So like, you know, you're rolling, you know, for your abilities. You don't make the hunger roll initially. You just roll the dice with the hunger dice that you have, and if you roll like a one on that, then you're hungry instead of losing your turn. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which, mm. Or like it, it adds another. Like every time you roll a one, it adds one more hunger die, maybe. Exactly. Like further rolls. But like, I feel like the whole losing your next turn if you roll like a one on your hunger die yeah. sort of reeks to me of like Savage Worlds stun oh. or like shaken. <laughs> uh, shaken, yeah. yeah. And just yeah. like. That ended up getting pretty bullshitty. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, no, yeah. I see that because angry. It, yeah, yeah. It's the thing where it's like, oh, you know, if you're hungry, yeah, you might be distracted, but you're you're certainly 
active it's still. Just, so right. It's not like it's something yeah. that you're used to. I mean, right. this right. is a constant state of being. Right. Mm-hmm. right. So you know, you're constantly dealing with your hunger, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and you know, checking it with your composure and everything else, constantly checking your frenzy. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I agree that you know, losing your turn doesn't really make sense. No. I mean, especially if, if you have a hunger of one. Yeah. I mean, you could say like once yeah. you get up to five. Yeah. Right. You know, it's right. automatic. Yeah. Well, plus it's like. Uh, I, I love the compulsion condition. rules, and yeah. I think they should really have that as a thing that can happen anytime. I know. You know, so if you're only rolling 100 die, you're never going to roll on the compulsion table. Right, yeah. yeah it's. It, I feel like I didn't have as many opportunities to... No, there's really just one. ...to do, yeah. to really play up the conflict part, like the different... Um, yeah, spending your composure. The combats and the yeah. injuries, and I just, it wasn't as available. Mm. It was just... Plus, I yeah. was frankly kind of disappointed mm. that it didn't really take a lot of effort to avoid going into a frenzy. Yeah. Because there were definitely some moments where some of us had some really low composure mm-hmm. off the bat. Oh, yeah, and it was, you know, in terms of in character, you know, a really tense moment. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, well, you're fine. I think the intention yeah. is that you're, you're supposed to be spending your composure, mm. but none of us were getting compulsion, so it's like I didn't ha- ever have to spend it, because I think the intention is like, I get two chances to quash a compulsion, and then I'm out of composure, and then it's like, oh shit, I'm going to frenzy automatically now. Right, and maybe that was my, like, well, shortcoming. It, it might also just be the thing, this, this you know, it's our, our first session. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, you know, yeah. just like the hunger dead, I don't have a chance yeah. to build exactly. up, you know, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. the likelihood of frenzy. Yeah, it's hard, hard to fun. know. And the yeah. fact that it's like a one shot, so the characters are kind of disposable, so we don't really mind draining people to lose a humanity. Right. Because, <laughs> right, right, right. Exactly. Because yeah. I mean, we're not going to be playing them after today, but like right. if you're if you're really trying to, you know, hold yeah. on to that resource, yeah. then yeah. maybe your playstyle changes a little bit. Definitely, yeah. definitely. I think I, they're uh, closer to where they want to be, but they're not quite there yet. Yeah, so. no, and it's I'm feeling a little frustrated because part of me is like I hope I was I mean, the way that you all were going about it was very like it was actually the least numbers of conflicts <laughs> that you were going to encounter. Mm-hmm. So oh, if you had, you really did. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. if you had actually been more like, no, like like this deal is taking longer than the cops would have. All the cops would have shown up with with things. But then there were things that you were offering to me. Mm. Like the cops would have shown up with guns drawn for sure. Mm. But since Malort was on it and like into it, and then like I'm gonna text my contacts and be like, get yeah. the hell out yeah, of here. Was, yeah, that, yeah. Was, that was great. Really so it's yeah. like okay. And then also with Bronwyn, like the fact that you didn't attack her mm. right away it was just like, oh okay, so yeah. this goes fine. I mean, you weren't really that rude to her. No, we're not. Yeah. And she she hates rudeness. So well, it's, like, it's like I just want to get Kenny back. If so. you would, be, yeah, exactly. Yeah, but if we either one of us had frenzied. Yeah. Then yeah, then that would have been, been so I don't know. It's just like in terms of the conflict, there really wasn't that much that I could bring mm-hmm. out. Mm-hmm. I tried sure. to make things a little like bringing juggler in and be like, hey yeah. what's up? What are you doing? I mean overall I was satisfied. I, I, I had a good time and, and uh yeah. so and I like the, as as it felt successful. Like okay. yeah. Yeah. So like like yeah. we, you know came up with plans. Uh-huh. Yeah. We, you know, made, you know, efforts to, to do things a certain way and they happened yeah. in favor. And I felt like we were in danger pretty much the whole time. So, yeah, you sure. know. I hope so. Yeah, oh, very much. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. The yeah. whole bit with jugglers being like, come on, bring it in for a hug. That was like, terrifying. Oh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was so. something I brought in just like, hey, well, just have to have them show up. That Especially well it, because what they introduced in the very beginning that it says that in Gary there's a population of like, what, 10, 10 to 20? Kindred mm-hmm. tops, mm-hmm. and we know who seven of them are, right? Because yeah, you know that's that's just us. Yeah, yep. you know, yeah. and yep. so essentially what. Uh, Modius and the juggler make it like nine. So yeah. it's like, okay, so there's like one yeah. to eleven other kindred yeah. in town. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. not on our side. No, no, it's weird. What you think? So, for my own selfish uh, purposes, what did you think of the. Um, the character portraits was that helpful? Fucking but I loved it. Yeah. yeah, and honestly, I loved yeah. having like instant quick reference. Okay, and oh, I could yeah. just like flip and be like, "Oh yeah, no, it's that person." Yeah. Okay, yeah, no, this like, should be like standard. Oh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> no, this was super helpful. Okay, yeah, this good. is way and, better. Uh, than and you, usually okay. give us. you yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And you curated the the pictures perfectly. Yeah, I yeah. cast yeah. everybody. Great. I just I thought I'll just make a collage of everyone yeah. and just make it where they are. Like you're in Chicago or you're in Gary. Yeah, it was awesome. Like that way you have it and then you're like who the hell is that yeah no no like, right. like a point of reference was yeah. okay good yeah that's on. fantastic good good and it was like that easy thing like oh like 
brown wine. Oh, cool. Like, obviously, she's from Chicago. Like, let's right. go to that page. Mm-hmm. And, and her yeah. tribe and all yeah. that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The one thing that I was doing that would be nice is, like, having just, like, a little bit of space Note to space. make notes. Oh, right. Yeah. Uh-huh. Just yeah. for, like, you know, establishing white, white relationships area. and yeah. stuff like that. Because I'm, like... Yeah, because I wrote Jen right there, but I can barely even read it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I wrote it on her face. Yeah, that's yeah, where I'm going to Cool. Or even, you know, just like yeah. something there's so like, you know, notes. Yeah, it's kind of like this, this space here. Who's who? That's all. Yeah, but visually it doesn't really. I know. I'll, I'll try to figure out something. Cause I think like, I was, speaking you know, of Terradors. <laughs> I want to, what was that? Oh, yeah, Rapture. Rapture style. Yeah. You yeah. just have like, you know, this is yeah. like your personal, like, mental file for this person. Right. Totally, totally. And then your shit list, are they good with you? Like, yeah. No. Awesome. Yeah, I just wanted something, an easy way to convey all the characters. You could just have them in front of you and you don't have any questions. It's just like, okay, yeah, here's definitely. what oh, they made they all like. the difference. It's good. awesome. Yeah. Good. Yay. Okay, well, yeah. thank you so much again for humoring me and for. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, all, all in fun. all, it's uh, it's it's kind of, like I said, I think it's coming. Together. It's slowly coming together. I really like the the spend a willpower to establish details thing. Well, yeah, that's that really that was cool. good. So, that was yeah. fun because it's like, ooh, how important is this to me? Yeah. Right. To so, yeah. establish, you know. Yeah. yeah. Or, I, know, I love that kind of collaborative world yeah. building. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, right. it's fun because it does kind of allow you a little room to like. You know, establish relationships mm-hmm. with each other. Mm-hmm. Like it's, in, you know, not yeah. just implied. It's like, oh yeah, no, we've totally like. Sure, you're right, you're right. This is canon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. this is canon. Yeah. yeah. You want to bring something? Yeah, yep. for sure. Well, thanks again. Thanks. Thank you so Thank much you. for all your hard work. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, she really put in the hours. I can tell. Definitely. Yeah, it's amazing. I know. No, and honestly, like my write up, I really enjoyed. <laughs> you know, you have the who are you, what are you, mm-hmm. but having like everything else, like, you know, like how my merit actually applies to my character, mm-hmm. yeah, what right. my motive is, you yeah. know, like... Yeah, they had all the... It's like, yeah. it is nice to not have to... Right. Especially for a playtest, like... Who is like a rule book. Or yeah. just, like, think about, like, oh, who, mm, like, what is my motive? Like, mm-hmm. oh, mm, like, what is my... I have to say, all the playtest stuff that they've given out, aside from the outline and weird typos and things, <laughs> that's been a little bluff. But all the characters have been so well established oh. and so well fleshed out it made it that really it just makes it just easy to it. access the character and go, okay, here's who I'm playing. Because mm-hmm. that's, I mean, that's what I feel is so fun about playing Vampire or any World of Darkness is that you can, your character just means so much to you it builds up over time as something you're carefully cultivating and, mm-hmm. and curating and so I think they were able to translate that really well in the play tests I will give them that yeah. the outline stuff was a little tricky for me to navigate but otherwise yeah, well. I think it was it was fine but yeah I love that they had everything just like here you go here's this person it's like mm-hmm. yes yeah. so yeah cool, cool. yay yeah. thanks again yeah. appreciate it happy October everyone yes yay. yes yes yes, yes. We hope you have enjoyed our inaugural short order series. Tune in next month for a spooky helping of Delta Green, with our own Jen Pearson taking the helm. Until next time... really sucked, didn't it? It could have done with higher stakes. It's enough to drive you batty. Okay, ghosts and ghouls, till next time. This is Mistress Black reminding you to always wash your necks. You never know when a guest will drop in for a bite. Next week's feature picture will be Blood Feast. Friday at midnight, as always. This is KTLA, Channel 5, Tribune Broadcasting in Los Angeles. Welcome to the KTLA Late Night News Update. Our top story tonight, fire at Beverly Hills Estate, leaves the mansion in ruins and the owner missing. Firefighters contain the blaze, which is not <laughs> LAPD police detectives are asking for information in the suspected of former L.A. soap opera star Aaron Evans. Evans, 24, last seen working at a 7-Eleven in Glendale. The year is 1989, and Aaron Evans is in way over his head. 
Neon Masquerade is a vampire 20th anniversary duet chronicle that gets under the skin of kindred unlife in the Anarch Free States. The Esoteric Order of Role Players Actual Play Podcast invites you to join us on this journey into the bloody heart of Los Angeles. Go to eorpodcast.com and search the Neon Masquerade tag to find out more.